Oh, man, I hope I'm not late. I'm here to meet Ray Saunders. He's the man who built the steam clock right here in Gastown. And, uh, gosh, I'm supposed to meet him right around uh, now. I better find him. The steam clock story begins in 1975, when the city of Vancouver had a steam vent in Gastown that needed a covering. But the solution used elsewhere wasn't right for Gastown. They didn't want to have an ugly cement planter box in Gastown. So they phoned me and said, would, you, would I build a steam clock? And at the time, I was too stupid to know it couldn't be done. So I said I would do it, and this is what's resulted. <laughs> was this the first major project of this scale that you had done? This time? is the very first uh, public clock I built. I did a lot of, uh, I was a metal sculptor for about 10 years, and I made a lot of wall sculptured clocks, you know, 10 or 12 feet high, but nothing outdoors. So this is my very first effort at a public clock, and uh, I'm, I'm very gratified to see how popular it's become. It's, it's sort of a must-see tourist attraction exactly. in Vancouver, and one of, the, one of the most photographed pieces of, of uh, attractions in the city. But I was working on it part-time, and it was a difficult uh, to build this clock when the money was just trickling in from the steam clock committee that was volunteering to raise the money. So the money, as the money trickled in, the uh, steam clock got built. So it was in my basement down the street here in Gastown. Uh, we took the staircase out and we built the clock up through the basement, right up through the stairs. Right. Saunders' original design included some special features. And, and I built a little ledge here yeah. for little kids to climb on. Uh, so they can get their feet up on here and uh -huh. climb up on the clock and have a look inside. That's, <laughs> that's the whole idea of it. Oh, that's great. While we were talking, the quarter hour passed without a sound from the steam clock. Ray opened it up to try to fix it, and in the process, he explained to me just how the clock's Rube Goldberg-type mechanism works. We have all these small uh, steel balls, which are the, the, the weights. Now, each one of these balls is about one pound, and they are uh, geared five to one. So each ball is pulling five pounds on the mechanism. And every, every five minutes, a steel ball comes off of here and rolls across the other side, like that. It waits there to get on the other track, and it comes up, lifts the ball up, and carries it to the top, and gets ready for its load uh, back down the other side. Forgive my confusion, but I don't understand why the steam doesn't directly drive the mechanism and what the ball, why the balls are, well, what the balls the ball, do. The, ball, uh, the balls are the weight drive. To, to, put, to make an accurate clock, you yes. have to uh, use gravity to drive the movement. Ah. The gravity-powered uh, clock, wow. and it's steam wound up, that's all. I see. And in no sense trying to drive an engine uh, uh, clock mechanism with steam, uh, because... It's not accurate. It's not accurate, and this is uh, the accuracy of this clock is, a, is the pendulum, ah. how the pendulum length is and how it swings. So it still comes down to the pendulum yeah. even with everything. And I'm afraid the crease is coming out of my pants here. <laughs> okay. It could be the foo-foo valve. Oh! Falsy foo-foo valve. Here we go. Believe it or not, the clock's not finished. There's still a few features Ray would like to add. I want to put some little lights in the clock to light up the inside of it and the base. And my future plans uh, down the road are to put some little bronze people in the clock doing little whimsical tasks, uh, little, like little 1890s figures, uh, workmen that are frozen in time, mm -hmm. uh, like oiling and adjusting and uh, and doing little tasks inside the clock to make it more fun for the kids, Wonderful. the kids of all ages. Of course. Any future plans for any grand schemes for clocks oh, of the yes. future? Right out here on the waterfront, I have some grandiose ideas for the uh, world's first laser beam clock. At night on the hour, a light beam will shoot out of the top of the clock, will be seen for over 30 miles away, which will signal the time by flashing on and off uh, a green beam. This is, this, you can get this ready for the millennium. That's the, I'm calling it the Millenn Vancouver Millennium Clock. I'm just looking for someone who's interested in buying a clock in the million dollar range. <laughs> That's what it is. Thanks so much okay, for uh, talking with me. You're welcome. Okay, bye -bye. take care. Yes.
place in it if you want.